This is Twit. We we just had a confirmation hearing. Finally, finally at last for our favorite prospective uh, candidate for NASA administrator, who I like to call Space Jesus. Is he Eric our favorite, Eisenhower. or is he the only one right now? Right. Well, or, or, I haven't heard of any alternatives, but yeah. uh, I don't think I'd. You know, there's always a case to be made, in my humble opinion for a strong politician in that position because you really need to know how to brass knuckle with people to keep your budget straight. Mm -hmm. But if they put a number, and I haven't heard who the deputy might be under Jared, I suspect they will be a politician, uh, hopefully uh, somebody who can handle that heavy lifting for him. And then we suspect Greg Autry will be in position number three. That's the, the, the current CFO. talk, right? So that's a team right there. But uh, I'd like to get your take on the hearings, because the one thing that stuck out to me more than anything, and I forget oh, yeah. which, which uh, senator it was, but he said, now, Mr. Isaacman, I just want to know if Elon Musk was in your meeting with Donald Trump. Yep, that was and Senator Ed Markey. Of <laughs> Jared said it was a meeting between me and the president, or it was a meeting with the president. Yeah. And then he asked that question four or five more times, and Jared would repeat the same answer every time. So clearly that was something that was prepped or scripted. He also but, asked asked, asked uh, Jared Isaacman to, to answer yes or no, and yes. uh, and he refused to answer yes or no, and just repeated that he, ha he was there for yeah. a meeting with Which, the president. And that's actually one of the things I wanted to talk about. It was actually a very mm -hmm. interesting uh, and, and and long. I think I think it, it lasted about like two and a half, three hours. Uh, the the hearing itself until about twelve thirty. Yeah, about about two and a half hours. And it, it wasn't just Jared Isaacman alone uh, under right. his you know being being pitched as the Na the Trump's NASA chief uh, you know to be confirmed. There was a um, uh, a member of the board, uh, I believe, for the FCC uh, as right. well, and she was grilled about uh, independence from Elon Musk and Star link in FCC communications, which was very interesting in its own right. But, yeah. um, you know, but for us and for the purposes of the show, clearly uh, Trump has a favorite. It's Jared Isaacman, billionaire, shift four CEO, made his billions with that payment system. Uh, every time you 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 check out at, at at a store or whatever, if it says shift four, uh, he's getting some of your your ducats, you know, while while you're doing that. <laughs> and that's that's where he uh, got all of his billions so that he can have a private air force. He has the largest private air force. He actually trains U.S. military pilots with his well, right. with that company he co-founded, and he has flown to space. Twice, uh, he uh, launched... excuse me, but but let me just say, maybe a good preparation for being NASA administrator is the fact that his private air force plays the adversary in the war games. So, oh yeah, there you, you go. Know, yeah. If you're used to shooting down pilots in mock battles, maybe that's a, a good thing for running NASA. I'm sorry, yeah, go ahead. I, mean, I mean, so so this, this I mean, he, and he is a pilot. He doesn't just own the company. He flies right. those supersonic planes, and uh, and so he is. He's got a lot of that experience. Just it's not with the military. It's not with NASA, right? It's this private stuff that he has done over time. And he bought two flights at already uh, with SpaceX. He's he right. you know flew the first all private mission to orbit, Inspiration Four, back in 2022. Uh, just last year, he did the first private spacewalk with his crew on Polaris Dawn, and he did buy or reserve at least two more flights, including the first crewed flight of Starship. If he's confirmed, though. Uh, as NASA administrator, those missions are going to be on hold because that uh, that would otherwise make him both customer and then I guess contractor to SpaceX. And well, and I, I think I read that he was actually going to cancel them if he yeah. was confirmed, but yeah, at least so, on hold. Yeah, yeah, I, at least at least on hold. But it was very interesting. You know, during the panel, he was grilled repeatedly by Ted Cruz of of Houston uh, and, and others about what his plans would be, and then also the impact that Elon Musk may or may not have had on those plans. And two things uh, really stood out, three things actually. Number one, he really feels that the path that we're on with SLS to get to the moon uh, for Artemis three, uh, et cetera, is like the fastest, if not the most efficient way to do it. This is the system that we have. So right. he anticipates kind of, you know, seeing that through so, so that we can achieve. Well, to be uh, specific though, flying through Artemis two and Artemis three. Exactly. And then I think he's leaving it open for that proposed off ramp from Scott Pace and others where we say, okay, do we now move off of SLS? Exactly. But the Artemis three, that was like the, the question, like, like are we going to yeah. go to the moon with that or not and so uh but but a little bit of a twist to that is that he doesn't see the moon as the end-all destination that the artemis program is making it out to be he sees it as like the stepping stone to mars we've heard that a lot 
but it seems like it has a bigger focus. That's not surprising because he seems to be very close with Elon Musk. That's what Elon Elon's whole spiel uh, is about. Number two, he said that he didn't anticipate uh, uh, big cuts to science, which is really at odds with something we're going to talk about in a little bit too. Uh, like that was too early to tell. So kind of the jury was still out. And very similarly, he was asked about closing NASA centers or moving them. There's a, a push to move NASA headquarters to Kennedy Space Center, for example. And he said that it's too early to understand he needs to get the lay of the land uh, uh, once uh, or if he's confirmed. So that's interesting. But a lot of talk was about his independence from Elon Musk. How uh, much of, a, of an actual independent operator will he be? He was asked repeatedly uh, by senators, uh, did Elon... Uh, have any input in your plan for NASA? No, no, he said. In fact, he said he didn't have detailed discussions with Elon Musk at all. He did admit that when he went to Mar-a-Lago to meet with President Trump uh, to interview for the for the position, that he did, uh, uh, I guess, have some kind of conversation in passing well, and, with and Elon. And so they kept pressing, did you have a meeting with Elon at Mar-a-Lago? Yes. And he yes. said, no. Well, did you see Elon? Yes. Did you have a meeting with Elon? No. Did you have a conversation with Elon? Perhaps. I mean, it was just, it gets to the point where it's absurd the way they're parsing. I, I understand the importance of knowing the difference. He did finally come out and say, look, SpaceX works for us, not the other way around, yeah. which I thought was a good thing for him to say. And he did also confirm that he plans to stay with the ISS through, through 2030 because, of course, Elon's been saying, oh, let's get rid of it. Well, we he said that he wants to talk to Elon Musk to find out what his reasoning is to end the space station. Mm -hmm. uh, but he doesn't see the need to, to end it early, but wants to know what the reasoning is. Uh, uh, that That's what he said uh, during the talk. It was, Gee, it was very what enlightening. What do we think the reasoning might be? Yeah, I know. I know. Would a couple of starships in orbit make a good... Uh, Space station base? Okay. Uh, I don't know. I don't know, man. But it, it was quite interesting. But the, the big exchange with, with the Senator Ed Markey from Massachusetts was, was I think, the, 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 the big sticking point. Was Elon Musk in the room when Donald Trump offered you the job? Right. Yes or no? He wouldn't say. It sounds very much that through that omission that, I mean, Elon might have been in that room, which you would expect. They, he's like his biggest customer right now uh for private well, space flights so we'll and, have to see if uh, you know does elon being in the room necessarily indicate that he that he envisions having jared be a sock puppet at nasa which i don't think any of us believe would be the case and if he wasn't shoveling gold doubloons on the musk d uh, to uh trump's desk i don't see the problem well, I, I guess I guess it's just it's a matter of optics, right? Because if the answer is yes, and if he says yes to yes, Elon was there. I had a meeting with him about NASA and everything. Then it it's a really bad luck. It look it looks like like Elon is able to you know walk over the president to get his yes man in charge. It makes Jared look like a yes man, uh, and that's the only reason that he's there. And it makes Trump look like he got you know that he has no say that he's just kind of throwing Elon a bone to get what he needs. So I can see that there's optics there, but I really hope. That anyone that gets, you know, that if if, if Jared does get in, uh, 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 confirmed, uh, Jared Isaacman, that um, that there will be an independent, you know, administrator in charge for the best of the government. He said that was his 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 guiding star. What is the best path for the country, for NASA, for the legacy of the U.S. space program, not for this company, for that company, for this party, etc. So that's encouraging, I think. Well, and time will tell, and I'm no expert, and this is just a personal opinion, but I've met him a few times. I've heard, I think, three addresses by him, and mm -hmm. we'll probably hear another one at the ISDC that you'll be attending because he's going to be one of our keynotes. And as far as you know, anybody can tell, he's sincere. He's on yeah. the right side of the angels. He really wants the best for the country in the space program. There's no political agenda there, at least not that's obvious. Of course, you can't be NASA administrator without being a politician to some extent. But I think he'll be as good as we've had. So it is. Right. It is. It is very challenging. I, I agree with you 100. percent He seems like a great guy. I've met him as well. I've interviewed him uh, as well, and uh, and he seems to know also what he's talking about in a very mm -hmm. unique way. Like we talked about yeah. the private space force. It's a very different perspective, and um, you know we saw. Uh, I think we saw a lot of similar talk about Jim Bridenstine when he was selected, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, and w we got Artemis out of that. We got a lot of sniffs, right. and there was pushback to many efforts by that that first Trump administration to shut down Earth science uh, under uh, Bridenstine. Right. In fact, they resurrected some programs. So we'll see. 
We'll see. I mean, I I think that in the climate, it's a much more polit- politicized and dynamic one than there was back uh, in that first one. So we'll see how this whole thing pans out. Because sadly, like you just said, it touches everything now. Nothing yeah. is apolitical, even if it seems like NASA would be one of those. Well, things. nothing at NASA is safe, including the Goddard Space Center, which they're talking about closing. Hey, if you enjoyed this clip, be sure to check out This Week in Space. You can find us on your favorite podcast app or see the link in the description below. See you there.